So theoretical probability is the perfect world. So this is when we're dealing with probability without the randomness. This is when everything goes exactly to plan and exactly how we would expect it. Like if I'm flipping a coin, it will go head, tail, head, tail, and go exactly half heads and exactly half tails. So theoretical probability, the formula for it is very similar to the experiment. And again, it's just the number of outcomes for an event over the total number of possible outcomes. And in a way, that still simplifies to the exact same thing I've been talking about. The number of what we wanted over the total number possible. So theoretical probability, again, this is when we're looking at what should happen if everything goes perfectly. So if we want to find out a theoretical probability, you need to find the number of desired outcomes. That's what you want and what goes on top. So that's what we want. And then find the total number of possible outcomes that will go on the bottom of the fraction. So as an example, the word theoretical is cut up into letters and put in a bag. What is the probability that the letter chosen blindly from the bag is, let's see here, a vowel? Well, the first thing that I need to do, possibly here, is to figure out the desired outcome here. And what I want is how many vowels. So I need to figure out how many vowels are in the word theoretical. So let's count them out. We have one, two, three, four, five, five vowels. So I could say probability of a vowel. You wouldn't have to write that out if you don't want. You can just put down the fraction. Again, one, two, three, four, five vowels out of how many total? So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So five out of eleven. That's the probability of getting a vowel. And the probability of getting a T. How many T's do I have here? I have one, two. So that's going to be two out of eleven. Because there's two T's out of eleven. So remember, it's like having this word, I'm cutting up all the letters into little individual cards, and I put them in a bag and shake them up. So I reach in there, and there's two T's possible for me to grab out of the 11 total. Probability of getting a C. In this case, I know inside of that bag there's only one C floating around in there, so I have a probability of one out of the 11 total is going to be a C. What about the probability of getting an R or an L? If I don't mind, if I have an R, I win a lolly, and if I get an L, I also win a lolly. So I just need one. I don't care which one it is. So how many R's do I have here? I've got one. And how many L's do I have? I've also got one L. So reaching into that bag, if I'm looking for either an R or an L, that's two possibilities for me. I've got one R and one L. So that, again, is going to be two out of 11 for my probability for it. And again, you can leave those as the fraction or convert them to decimal. For instance, 5 divided by 11, see what you get. But um, I'm going to leave those as fractions. So another common example for theoretical probability is going to be with a deck of cards. And if you don't play a lot of cards, I'm just showing you what you've got for cards here. Remember that there's four suits, the clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades. They go from ace all the way up to king. The jack, the queen, and the king, these are the ones that are considered face cards, because they have a face on them. And then um, there's a total of 52, so a total of 52 cards in a regular deck. So if I shuffle up a deck of cards, um, and I take the top card, I choose the top card, what is likely to happen, what is more likely to happen between the following choices? So am I more likely to get a red card or get a diamond? Well, let's think about this. What's the probability of getting a red card? Well, for red cards, I've got all of the hearts and all of the diamonds. So for each suit, that's 13 total. I have 13 total of each suit. So to get a red card, that's 13 plus 13. That's half the deck. That's 26 out of 52, which is 1 half. Probability of getting a diamond. 
Well, the diamond is only one of those suits. That's 13 out of 52. And that's just a quarter of the deck. So between those two, the one that's more likely f to happen, that's more likely for me to hap occur here, is going to be that it's a red card. That's going to be more likely. And my reason for that, again, here is because the probability one-half is bigger than the probability of one-quarter. Again, you could write that as 0 0.5 and write this as 0 0.25 if you need to put it into a decimal. That 0 0.5 is bigger than 0 0.25. Another pair to compare here. What's more likely to happen if I get a queen of to get a queen of hearts or to get an ace? Let's think about this. Queen of hearts? Well, how many queens of hearts do I have in the deck total? So again, I'm looking here for the one I want out of the total possibility or the desired ones out of the total. And for queen of hearts, I only have one queen of heart possible. So in the entire deck, I've got a 1 in 52 shot of getting the Queen of Hearts. And for aces, just any old ace that's not telling me which suit. So the probability of getting an ace... Well, I've got four of them. Club, Diamond, Heart, and Spade. So that's four out of 52. And I can see between those, one out of 52, or four out of 52, I've got four chances at getting an ace only one chance of getting the Queen of Hearts. So the Ace, in this case, is more likely. Another example for us to look at. Your teacher offers you, offers you to select one lolly from a bag. Inside of the bag, there are eight red, three purple, two blue, and one orange lolly. What is the probability that you select one of these following things? So could be helpful. Think about drawing up a lolly bag for yourself. So I've got eight reds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight reds. Oh, I don't have a purple. I'll use peas. I have three purples. One, two, three. I have two blues. And I've got one orange lolly. So we'll say O for orange lolly. So that's what the bag looks like if I was able to see inside of it. But we're going to assume here that I can't see inside of it. Oops, sorry, probability. Okay, so again, if I'm dealing with this, I want to know the desired number or the number of what I want out of total possible. So to solve any of these probabilities, I need to figure out the total. So 8 plus 3 is 11, plus 2 gets us to 13, plus 1 gets us to 14. So we have a total of 14. And the number of purple lollies out of that entire bag is 3. So 3 out of 14. If I reach my hand in there, I've got a 3 out of 14 shot at getting my purple lolly. Either a blue or an orange lolly. Well, again, if you reach your hand in and circle around in there, the chance of getting blue is 2, the chance of getting the orange is 1. So in that case, if I don't care which one I get, either that it's the blue or that it's orange, I've got three possibilities, 1, 2, 3 of them. So that's also 3 out of 14. The probability that it is not a red, well, Going into the bag, if I reach around, how many options do I have that aren't red? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six total options out of the 14. I can simplify to three over seven. And finally, what's the probability of getting a black lolly? Now, I know I used a black pin there, but that's because I didn't have purple or orange. But going back to the question, there's only red, purple, blue, or orange in the bag. So the probability of getting black, well, there's no blacks in there, so I've got a 0 out of 14 shot at that. It's basically impossible. I don't have a black lolly unless I'm a magician. So, again, dealing with these probabilities, you just need to figure out your total. And then what you put on top is how many possible options do you actually want out of the total possible available to you.